Hi! Within this lecture, we're going to see how we can break the HSTS and how we can downgrade it to HTTP in a better cap tool. So far, we have been using this better cap with HSTS, with HSTS hijack caplet in order to downgrade HTTPS to HTTP. So let me clear my browsing data one more time in my Windows virtual machine so that uh, we can try this new thing, okay? So remember, we included twitter.com in our caplet configuration file. So maybe you can think that, yep, if you go to twitter.com now, it will just downgrade it to HTTP. Actually, it won't happen. It doesn't work like that. So let me test this. Let me go to twitter.com. As you can see, it still works in HTTPS. So even though I can see my attack, uh, my target actually, is going into the twitter.com um, I cannot see the content of the packets but it works because if I go to hotmail.com it will just downgrade it to the HTTP like that okay so it kind of um, doesn't work on HSTS right now even though it's called HSTS hijack it uh, downgrades the HTTPS to HTTP, but it doesn't work on HSTS. So how do we do it? The key lies over here. If we browse the HTTPS, the HSTS websites from an HTTP website, okay, through an HTTP website like google.com, then it works. So if I go to google.com, Gmail uses HSTS, but we managed to um, bring down the google.com. As you can see, this doesn't use HSTS or it doesn't use HSTS properly because we are uh, actually downgrading it to HTTP, as you can see. Now, if I search something from Google, wherever I go, it will be HTTP. So if I search Facebook, if I search for Facebook, if I go to Facebook, it will open in HTTP form. If I go to Twitter, it will open in HTTP form. So it depends where user um, is coming from to that website. For example, if they directly go to facebook.com, it won't downgrade it to HTTP. But if they go through this google.com, then it will work. As you can see, it's still stalling a little bit. It uh, actually distorts our connection a little bit when we use better cap uh, with this ARP spoofing at HSTS hijack caplet. And it takes some time. So maybe you will have to refresh this or you will have to search this one more time in order to make sure this works. So let me uh, just search it one more time okay and let's see if we can get the result here you go now we see the result and over here we see the facebook we see everything over here like twitter and other stuff as well now since my google.com is http even though it says https over here okay in the address tab if I just open this in new tab or if I just click on that, it will open the Facebook like that. And you can just click over here. And as you can see, it's trying to load the HTTP version of Facebook. And it managed to load the HTTP version of Facebook. So this is only way you can actually downgrade HSTS to HTTP if you go to that website through an HTTP website. Okay, so you may think that uh, this won't even work, but as you can see, if I say test test at gmail or hotmail.com and give some random password over here, we can go back to our Kali Linux once this uh, request has been sent, we can see the content of this request okay and uh, in the real life there is a high chance that a user will just write facebook.com in the browser they won't go through with the google.com maybe you would think yep this is a low chance attack as i said before okay it's not ideal but it's only way to um 
actually downgrade HSTS to HTTP at this moment. And I believe we have to refresh this and it took me to a login page. Let me give the same credentials one more time to test this, okay? Say hotmail.com and give some password over here and click on login. So at this moment you can think that how our hackers are hacking Facebooks and Instagrams. As I explained before, this is not an ideal way to hack Instagram passwords, Facebook passwords. We're gonna go into that subject later on in the course. They are using social engineering techniques, okay? And let me search for a password, let me search for test test. And let's see if we can get these results. Yeah, I believe this doesn't work. Let me run it one more time and let me try to get test test. Yeah, here you go. Now we have this test test at hotmail.com and uh, we used hotmail.com in the Facebook. So I believe we managed to get the Facebook. Yep, here you go. This is facebook.corn login. <laughs> and this is not even com. I, I don't know if you have realized that the web page is actually loaded in the domain of .carn. So as you can see, we have this task task at hotmail.com. I believe this is coming from the keylogger JavaScript that we have uh, been running with the caplet. Okay, so we have this test test hotmail.c, hotmail.co, hotmail.com. So this is coming from the keylogger rather than the request itself. So this is a BD of running the keylogger along with our script. Okay. So as you can see, we managed to get the Facebook information as well. But again, this is not an ideal way to hack Facebook passwords. We're going to see how hackers social engineer people to steal the Instagram passwords, steal the Facebook passwords, and how uh, hackers use some other techniques to steal those passwords as well. We are studying the network attacks in this lecture, in this section, actually. We are trying to understand what is um, ARP spoofing, what is DNS spoofing, how we can inject JavaScript code and stuff. Don't focus on stealing Facebook passwords at this moment. We're going to go into that later on. And again, this is not working very smooth um, in the better cap, it's working more ma in much better way, I believe, in Man in the Middle framework. But if Man in the Middle framework doesn't work for you, you have this option as well. Let's stop here, and within the next lecture, we're going to see JavaScript injection with better cap.